and welcome to another episode of the Elseworlds Exchange. I'm Sal. And I'm Joel. That's right, baby, we're back. And we are talking about pitches, one of uh, people's, one of, a fan favorite theme or topic mm-hmm. on this show, I think, is uh, we're pitching stuff. We're taking ideas and money out of our own hands and giving it to you <laughs> for nothing. Uh, yep. But uh, but the reality is we were never being tapped or asked for these pitches anyway. So these are pitches for, for the world. 100% unsolicited. Exactly. Unsolicited and un, uh, unrequited. So here we go. Uh, we're pitching. Th- there was this initiative a couple years back. Uh, Batman, one bad day concept that I was very much uh, of two minds about. I don't know about you, Joel. It was, uh, mm. you know, when they first announced it, I was obviously like, okay, one bad day. Obviously, it's a line from the killing joke. The concept is you're killing, joking, all these different Batman villains. I feel like that's kind of unnatural if you're forcing it. You know, you're saying like, yeah. hey, top creators of our field, killing joke, Mr. Freeze. <laughs> yeah. What does that even mean? You know, exactly. I, I'm, I'm very much a proponent of like, you know, I don't think that you can Dark Knight Returnsify a lot of things because Dark Knight Returns is, is intrinsically Batman. Right. Uh, and yet they also uh, did that with Ninja Turtles too much effect. Nah, it's it's true and you know and some of those one bad day stories actually pretty goddamn solid some what the hell were you thinking uh, an embarrassment of riches because they got basically the top art and writing talent to do them so you know obviously some magic was gonna happen my biggest problem with those one bad day stories where it's like ooh, a lot of these needed more time to cook is what it is some of these were like half good ideas so i have my own half good ideas that's great yeah hey listen well then then it's in uh in good company let's say mm-hmm. uh but yeah man i i completely agree i do like a lot of like a lot of the um the physical stuff around it like i love the idea of a one shot mm-hmm. in the year 2022 i like the totally. idea of a prestige bound book being out there under the batman label that's a great opportunity it's a great option i loved it um giving some of these characters who would otherwise have to be subverted or Mm. modernized, you know, like I can imagine, Oh, I got a good two face story. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to be the sprawling long standing thing. Like it'll never last. And so it's like, Oh, well here's a two face book. Yeah. It's just a done in one two face book. You can be true to the character and just go for it. Um, Ironically, I don't think I like the two face one very much, but like some of these, yeah, well, they really lend themselves to like just do a just do a do, do a treatise on on the Riddler, you know, mm. or or Ra's al Ghul, and and show us what makes them so enduring and care and, and fun. Absolutely. But, uh, so so we're doing a little bit of twist on that concept, Joel. This is a this is an idea that you had uh, when we were when we we're cooking up ideas. Where it was uh, what if they break good as opposed yeah. to breaking bad? What if yeah, uh, how, what if we how about that? Yeah, we did a one good day. I guess is the is the unofficial name of this initiative. What's yes, the, what, what's the that's concept my here? title? So the idea so, yeah. is that like, yeah, the, the idea is you know what what if we found a way for these Batman villains who are always so endearing and so beloved to become the main characters and maybe do some good in their own story? What uh, what what would need to be the parameters for that? And also, I was heavily inspired by everything that Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy are doing right now in their own series. I didn't give pitches for them to make them heroes because it's already been done. They're it's already done doing death. it. We've seen it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's more like let's let's do something with characters that we haven't seen. Obviously, I mean, yeah, no. Um Poison Ivy makes a lot of sense. You know, like more now I, I think than they've ever. more now than ever. They've always like been teetering on the edge. I feel like the only you know, I, I I'm not reading the current Poison Ivy book that's out there. I gotta is, start. I'm only hearing good things. I know, and everyone loves it. It's just it's a very popular book. Uh it went from i think like a mini to a non-going uh, yes, which is which always is like crazy crazy to think about and a, and a good indication that the book is selling uh, you know otherwise i don't think that the book would be where it is today so also it's it's gwell wilson who i'm a massive fan of anyway and i haven't read her stuff since miss marvel so oh wow yeah you gotta be reading stuff man are you reading hunger in the dusk part no is it good should i check it's that good out? I, I i think you'd love it it's it's very All much right. uh up up that alley it's it, it's really really good stuff that's a that's a great book looks amazing uh but the uh but the art or the writing is also just top notch it's fun it, it really plays to her strengths because she's a uh you know she's a she's a fantasy fan she's a wow mm-hmm. player uh so she's like she infuses that into her into her greater fantasy Sold. world but, yeah so um do you want to approach that? How do you, like, where, wh- what were your criteria? How did you come up with these? Like, did you go like, all right, let's just go look at one bad day, all those books and just reflect them? Or was it like, just whoever uh, yeah. came to mind? 
Uh, yeah, I, I tried to reflect the one bad day line of characters, though I also added some ones who weren't in there. Obviously, I had to put Joker in there. Joker didn't have a one bad day story because he was kind of the impetus he had behind it. the whole. Yeah, he already had it. But I figured, you know what? I actually have a great Joker pitch, and it's a pitch you and I worked on together uh, way back in our How Do We Kill the Joker series. And I'm like, that's perfect. That's how you make Joker a main character and you make him a protagonist. It was our idea to send him to Apocalypse. Oh yeah, that's right. Wow, wow, what a what a fun concept. They still haven't done. No, they haven't. Yeah, Batman Joker Apocalypse. Yeah, Batman and the Justice League, they're finally sick of Joker's shit. They know Arkham Asylum can never hold him. They know he's only going to kill people. So they're like, all right, we're launching you to Apocalypse, the worst place on Earth. Fight it out with the other bad guys. We don't give a shit. And of course, because Joker is so crazy, he finds the silver lining in this. Like, oh, this place is so dark and dour. And oh, dark side, you're a lot like my Batman. You're my new special project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the idea of essentially planet hulking the, the mm -hmm. Joker is a pretty, pretty fun concept uh i love the idea of him being like no dark side is my new batman mm -hmm. and i'm just gonna make things difficult for him what is it and it's like okay so if the joker's batman is essentially the cosmic devil yeah what are you doing you know what i mean like that's it's that's it also so beautifully puts together because it's joker's chaotic evil versus dark side's ultimate lawful evil so of course they're going to clash with each other because they're two completely different schools of villainy and i just love the idea that eventually dark side would be driven so to the edge by the joker who would of course lead a parademon rebellion it's like oh my new harley now and he just starts painting parademons up yeah <laughs> To, to overthrow Darkseid, that Darkseid actually ends up maybe calling High Father and the New Gods for help. Like, I want a treaty. I want to make peace. Right. Get this clown off my planet. Mm -hmm. I kind of love that. That's that's fun. That's fun. I, I it, it, It's funny. Since then, I was reminded of a book, apparently, which was Salvation Run, JLA Salvation yes. Run, which has the a, a bunch of rogues doing By that. By the Fables guy, actually. Yeah, yeah. Is that Bill Willingham? Yeah, fucking um, Bill Willingham for a very short amount of time when he wrote DC books, which is wild to think. The JLA run has a lot of, like, it's funny. Everybody is just like, oh, yeah, Grant Morrison did an amazing job with JLA. Like, in between, there were a lot of other people on that run where it's like, oh, yeah, remember, like, during the period where everyone talks about Grant Morrison's Justice mm -hmm. League, don't forget Mark Wade wrote Tower of Babel. You know, <laughs> like, there was a lot of that going on. But uh, but this one isolates. It's a Joker story. It's centralized around that. That's a that's a fantastic black label book. Or even if you want to make it in continuity or whatever, it's, it's a book. That's a book you could. And it's so. it, it, it solves a problem too that so many other Joker stories have. Where it's like, how do you make someone so vile and repugnant the main character? Well, you set him up against another equally evil thing. So if Joker starts, you know, like torturing freaking freaking vermin Vunderbar and everything, or he like drops some dynamite down the pants of Granny Goodness, it's like, yeah, well, they were monsters, so it's okay. It's true. Yeah, you don't you don't necessarily it, it softens the Joker without actually ru like rubbing any of the edges off. Yeah, where all these other Joker stories like J Joker's had two ongoing series now, but they weren't really about him, though. Was no, and, and all the better for it. I don't want to read a book about Joker. This makes me actually want to read a, a book about Joker. The, yeah, like, I, if you're telling me like, oh, no, a Joker book that's actually secretly a, a Jim Gordon book. Mm -hmm. I'm on board for that. I love Jim. Gordon. Oh, yeah. But uh, but yeah. And if that's the only way we can sell it, I, I guess I understand. Um, I should mention that this show is sponsored by viewers like you. If you have a question or comment or you want to get add your own uh, two cents, you can do so by using Super Chats as a question or comment. We'll read it here on the show. Like Extra Medium, who gave an incredibly generous Super Chat. He, got, he did the Red Band Super Chat. Thank you so Damn. much, Extra Medium. Croc was a major figure dealing with Gotham's latest crisis. He used his he uses his current celebrity to get on the ballot, which claims <laughs> that he'll clean up the worst part of Gotham. It's Gotham Central meets Savage Dragon. I call it Killer Croc, Sheriff, Sheriff of the Narrows. Oh, wow. That's see, I didn't actually have anything for Killer Croc because he didn't have a one bad day, but, but that's genius croc decides he wants to be sheriff of gotham and he runs for politics on a you know i i understand because i'm from where you people are you know i'm not one of those beautiful people exactly i know what the ugly side of gotham looks like and Holy i'll take shit. a bite out of crime <laughs> oh my god that is good and then you have like a bunch of other villains being like can you believe he became a cop oh my god croc. cop the croc after all that <laughs> yeah cop the croc i kind of love it you know yeah, people are uh, running against him. Maybe you have like 
Bullock is like, nope. And he runs as Sherry. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of like this, you're like, oh no, like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn. I want to see Bullock. I want to see Croc. I want to see how this goes, but Croc is genuine in his meaning, or maybe he isn't, who knows? But like, this is true. Yeah, because like, man, talk about another character who they've also tried to soften and turn into a good guy several times, but it's just never taken for whatever reason. Because like at the end of the day, Waylon Jones is just a guy with a skin problem who looks like a monster and whose society treats like a monster. And also, hey, because under the scales, he's, he's also a black man, which I feel is often forgotten many a time. So that's like, oh, yeah, arts, how art often sometimes, you know, beastifies and animalifies yeah. black men in media and everything. And like, goddamn, there's something that, hey, hey, Christopher Priest, how, how have you not written a croc story? That's true. That's true. The, uh, the It's funny. I, I was reticent to do a croc story because for me, I was like, well, croc is a essentially not a bad guy in earth one yeah batman earth one volume two and three he's a member of the bat family at that yeah. point like which by the way also doesn't uh doesn't really contradict anything that we know about croc i love the idea yeah. like we still get the beautiful gary frank visuals of croc like jumping out and fighting batman but it's mostly because he's like what are you doing down here you're here to kill me like you know it's 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 self-defense but i love that um, that's that's really solid actually damn that's that that, that is that, that is much better than anything i would have written for croc that's really good actually. seriously no they well done sir and thank you very much for your generosity mm -hmm. uh somebody asked if like wouldn't dark side just kill the joker before he had a chance uh to do anything well the thing is since you're writing it mm -hmm. no yeah but that that is true yeah why wouldn't you but probably because dark side just wouldn't respect the joker and no, i was like you're not even worth getting omega sanctioned exactly i mean i can imagine joker uh, not even really registering on dark side's radar until, until it's too late. It's too late. And even then, you know, like, you know, I, I just, part of the argument about any idea is that I'm writing it. So that wouldn't happen. Also. I mean, you know, if Batman can fight dark side for as long as he has the Joker can too. Exactly. There's all kinds of explanations. Yes. Shouldn't dark side just, I don't know, build a complicated new Genesisian machine that amplifies mm -hmm. his, omega, his omega beams to blow up planets? True. Also, could you maybe argue that if he tried to omega sanction the Joker, it wouldn't work on him, or he would do the whole, oh, I lived alternate lives and alternate times in record time, because I've only ever been the Joker, I've only ever been me. Yeah, no, I would love to see him get omega sanction, only to have him come right back out the other side and being like, okay, what else you got? Like, you know... Doesn't does it work on me? I don't have all the same issues Batman does. Right. People would be mad because they're like, oh, so Joker's a god. He can out with, uh, like, withstand the Omega sanction. I, I say to you, if you was, if that's your argument, if Grant Morrison did it 30 years ago, you would have called it amazing. You would have creamed your jeans and said it was amazing. Uh, Catler, the pen for treats. For Joel, Bane falls in love with the art of wrestling. Well, uh. Kettler, you should read Bane One Bad Day. Because Which was my favorite one. <laughs> story about Bane is essentially that he is a wrestler. Uh, yep, and, and he's recreating his famous fights with Batman for, you know, dwindling audiences in his old age, reliving the glory days that he has long since left behind. It's a pretty solid pitch for Bane. I mean, at that point, like, Bane's never had a bigger, better story than his first. Mm -hmm. You know, which ben Vengeance of Bane is essentially Bane One Bad Day, but, like, you are, I lump that in with all of Nightfall. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but I do like the idea of Bane getting a one bad day. Though, again, Bane has had a couple of redemptions in his time. Indeed. Secret Six, uh, the times he joined forces with Batman when they thought they were siblings ever so briefly. In fact, hey, that's kind of what I build my Bane one good day pitch around. And that is he discovers, oh, King Snake had a lot of other illegitimate children all over the world. Now some evil villain or force is knocking them off. I have to go around the world to protect my siblings. And in doing so, realize I had a bigger family than I ever had. Exactly. Yeah, the family of Bane. or Yeah, exactly. But it's still Bane one good day. But yeah, I love the idea of Bane like going away and going on like a pilgrimage that mm -hmm. unites a Bane family and, and makes a whole like coterie of, of of banes and, and um, his family's doing interesting things too like oh you know i went to south africa where it turns out i had a half sister you know i went to the mountains of shanghai where <laughs> i had a brother i didn't know about and they're all like very different but they all like are going through similar things that bane went to and it's like you know i i am able to get them out of their prisons you know the way yeah. that whatever could for me you know i i lived my life without a mother and a father now i am father to all exactly of i'm the children. patriarch of the bane family 
family. Yeah, exactly. no, be, be the change you want to see in the world, Bane. That's actually that's not just a good prestige one shot. That is a status quo for Bane. That like, because mm -hmm. all you got to do if you ever want to make Bane Batman's villain again, he just falls off the wagon. Yeah, exactly. Just and then you got other Banes coming in being like, oh no, hell, maybe half the Bane family uh, gets all hooked up on Venom to help him out. And you get a bunch of Banes and Bane masks. Oh, and, and another half joins the Bat family or helps them out to fight the other Banes. You know, you, you could do all kinds of stuff with that where it sets up Bane and then projects Bane further into the next 10 years. Yeah, yeah, really, again, you're so right. Absolutely zero in on the whole drug addiction aspect of where it's like, yeah, I was clean for years and then I relapsed. Something happened exactly. to me. And I fell off the wagon and we tell like a really serious story about relapsing. Like, yeah, you know, when you're an addict, you're only ever in recovery, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Azorum says, uh, or Azorman says, I still think about Detective Nigma. Have mm. him just do Sherlock style stories of hunting serial killers or goofy crime rings with his own style. Such I a good the status idea. quo that they killed way too early. I completely agree. I feel like the best way to do it. I mean, like in in my opinion, with with with, with respect to the, the Riddler, the only way that you could really maintain the Riddler while also making him break good is if you make him superior Batman. Like Ooh. he is like because Riddler's motivations are to best and outsmart Batman. If he goes off and becomes the Riddler of his own city, or you know, or or just gets a job at Wacko Toys and does what he wants, you know, the 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 fun is gone, the challenge is gone, and the Batman, you know, rivalry does, doesn't exist. In this, it's like, no, Batman is Gotham's detective. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm better. Yeah. And so I'm going to prove it by being, you know, not Batman necessarily. He could, I mean, he could go Batman with it. He's like, you know, all Batman is literally me if I hit the gym. Yeah, what, basically. Right, which would be Riddler's misunderstanding. So Riddler's like, all right, so I'll hit the gym, you know, and I'll uh, and, and I'll become the superior Batman. Obviously, it would be a new name. So maybe, like, maybe I'll start taking Venom. Maybe I'll take. I mean, he did take Venom. Like he was injected with Venom by Bane as a like obstacle for Batman to overcome. Maybe Riddler's always been taking Venom. Maybe, Ooh, maybe, maybe 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 Riddler never got off the wagon when it came to uh, or fell off the wagon. I don't recall. Either way, uh, maybe he never shook that monkey off his back. Well, I mean, if we're doing Sherlock, I mean, Sherlock liked to take a lot of recreational drugs. So, yeah, maybe he's just doing little key bumps of venom. Every That's so it. Often. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's just, you know, just a, just enough. Just a, like, I'm not big. I'm not huge. But I'm I'm but I'm I, I need to keep up with these, you know, shaved apes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and, and then you could go either way. You could go, he he dons a bat style costume, or he just goes Riddler. It's just he's Riddler. He's like, no, I, I'm bright and colorful, and I kick ass. Absolutely. Uh, I did have a Riddler pitch. I actually went it. a completely other different direction to humanize him. Uh, I my pitch for Riddler turn his story into a buddy cop story. The idea is is that there is a terrorist out there calling themselves the Sphinx. Get it? Riddler of the Sphinx, you know, Riddle of the Sphinx, the oldest riddle known to mankind. They're doing these big international bombings all over the world and Argus figures, well damn, the only way we're going to be able to defeat a riddle themed criminal is to get our own riddle themed criminal. So they get Nigma out of jail and they team him with Steve Trevor. Oh, so we, okay. So we have Mr. Lovable Himbo, Steve Trevor, who is <laughs> beloved by every woman everywhere, even though he's never been shown to be that intelligent, teamed up with Riddler, the smartest man in the world, and he fucking hates it. And they have this real buddy cop dynamic where they try and stop the Sphinx. And Riddler is really interested in doing this because he's like, yes, if I do this, then I'll show I'm smarter than Batman because I'm solving a case Batman couldn't say you know, solve. And, you know, and I'll be useful to the government. And, oh, I'm actually enjoying people celebrating me for my smartness and everything. And, of course, we find it at the end. Hey, Sphinx is actually a woman. Mm -hmm. okay. Sphinx is a woman with a crush on the Riddler who is doing all of this to get his attention and so Nigma has a moment of like ooh do I join forces with her or do I join forces with my new bro Steve who has opened up my heart and mind and being like you know what I, I like you even though you're not as smart as me because you're you're so dumb you almost create like a like a Morty Rick and Morty field yeah to us. you're so dumb I kind of can't help but love you <laughs> yeah well I mean I could easily view a sequence in which Steve Trevor is kicking the crap out of a couple of flunkies while Riddler's just like checking his nails. Like, no, absolutely. I don't, I don't do that. I, I, I don't get my hands dirty on that.
So they're the ultimate brain and brawn team is what they are. A, a, a thousand years, Steve and Eddie. A thousand years, <laughs> Steve and Eddie. Yeah, uh, un- adventures. Uncanny Human Torch, Mr. Freeze saves Gotham from a massive heat wave. I mean, right. this is just a Batman story. I mean, Mr. Freeze is always just one good day away from becoming mm-hmm. an anti-hero or a hero. I mean, like, the only, you know, I think that's why they kind of, like, messed him up in the New 52 by being like, no, he is not He's sympathetic. He's too sympathetic. Yeah, he's too sympathetic. He's it's it's always sad when he's there because you know he kind of almost doesn't deserve it. But now let's make it deserve it. He's a creep too, and it's like yeah, we uh, we really want to keep telling Mister Free stories, but we can't when he's this sympathetic. And when Batman doesn't straight up just help him, Batman starts to look like the asshole. It's funny. It reminded me of um, the episode of the Batman animated series in which uh, God, what was it? Um, in which Matt Hagen gets like helped by a like super fan yeah, and they steal a bunch of chemicals and like, they're going to make him human again. And then mm-hmm. Batman is like, Ooh, he's like, <laughs> Oh no, I figured it out. And I'm like, make him human. And then just arrest the man. He's he a guy. He won't why? be a criminal anymore. After why are that? you fighting him? He's he all, you almost suffocated you idiot. What's the matter with you? Like, yeah, it's just, it, Batman makes all kinds of stupid decisions. Like <laughs> My way or no way, asshole. Yeah, exactly. Like, dude, come on. He was almost ready. Like, uh, he wouldn't be a problem anymore. Uh, Hulkzilla says, uh, at work right now, but wanted to give you guys a great weekend. And all, as always, always enjoyed uh, the Bat- Wolverine Predator episode. Take care. You too, Hulkzilla. Thanks for being here, man. Hey. Really it. And uh, we'll see you on the repeat. George J. The Ventriloquist develops a heroic personality with a different puppet. Oh, yeah. How have they ever done that before? And the puppet is a superhero, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I mean, like you could go, you could go crappy Bendis Moon Knight with it, where mm. he's like, "No, I have puppets of Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman," oh. and like, so he's like, "No, I do." Like, oh, this situation requires someone with a brain, so I'll be Batman, and like, <laughs> you know, this person, this one requires like a like speed, so I'm the Flash now. Like, you could do that. You could do, you could do a three issue arc with that. The problem with Ventriloquist, and not saying that that's not a good idea. That's one prestige bound story. Mm. Ventriloquist, one good day, is the Ventriloquist doesn't sell very well. No, which is a shame because he is such a cool image. Yeah, but I do love that idea. And I'm like, no, I'm I would green like that idea. I'd be like, yeah, no. Ventriloquist. Uh E-Man Harley returns to Arkham as a staff member and rehabilitates the really rehabilitates the inmates. Shocked they haven't tried that. That feels like a solo Harley pitch. At yep. one point, her getting her old job back via some Wayne Foundation grant. So she's still Harley, but she's Harley the psychiatrist helping people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like that idea. I, I, I feel like you could go more superhero with it. Like, I mean, honestly, I'm surprised that she wasn't working for Sanctuary in Heroes in Crisis. That probably would have been a good pitch, right? Because you would know better than most people what it is to redeem yourself, what it is to have these demons. And also, you, like, actually went to school for this. <laughs> yeah, like, maybe you were a consult on it, but instead she's the villain slash hero of that book. Slash like, Heroes in Crisis. Herring. It really does, which, man, I, I am so stoked that Green Arrow is bringing it back. Holy shit. Yeah, no, I know. It's, it, I was, I was like, there were a lot of, like, surprises in that Green Arrow book where I'm like, yes! Yeah. Bringing back the hacker group Cyber Rats and also yeah. doing Heroes in Crisis. I'm like, oh my god. J- what Joshua a, what a Williamson, move. you you absolute mad lad. You, If anyone could fix it, it would be you. Because technically you already fixed it with your Flash book. You're like, no, 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 Reverse Flash did everything. Yep, yep. Thank you. That was that, that 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 was all him, and also he was the reason uh, Damien was keeping people uh, in an unfair gulag prison. That was also him as well. You know, <laughs> while I'm while I'm fixing shit, I might as well throw some more shit on Reverse Flash's plate while I'm at it. Why not? Uh, the derp is the derps. Hey guys, I love these pitch episodes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, will you ever do a sequel to the one you did on making a DC theme park? No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that one did good. I think that was a one hit wonder. Not even that was that was that was a one hit, and uh, <laughs> by hit I mean a dud. Uh, but we did it. I feel like we were good on rides. I, th- I think we nailed it on our first try. Exactly. I agree. No, not uh, to Jace, shoot our own horns too hard. Yeah, no, we did nail it though. Uh, Jace Jensen, Killer Moth to me is one character that could easily be redeemed to have him light, find the light in people and want to protect oh. it. Mm. Killer Moth is a great look. I always like the way yeah. he looks. He's a fun character to draw. But he's such a tough nut to crack. Like what, what is his story? What, what is his internal life? <laughs> I will admit he is a bit of a blind spot for me. I've read his like first story. I, I've seen him set against Batgirl, but like, I don't really know much about him. I know. Yeah. I, I, I associate him with being like kind of a raving lunatic. So like, yeah. I, I don't know. 
but I don't have anything for, for Killer Moth. Just because I don't Same. know what the pathos is. Like, what is like, he about? Li li likewise with Firefly, he's just a pyromaniac. He's just an asshole. Firefly is such a lazy character. Like, you know, uh, in the pantheon of Batman villains, you know, like, one that sets fires and, like, is dressed like a bug. I'm just like... It's it's why even all these years later, my favorite uh, Firefly story is a pretty imperfect Batman the Animated Series episode, Torch Song, because they make him a creepy stalker in that where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, you're, you're the light that I follow in this bug thing. I'm a weird guy. And even then, they kind of fuck up that episode by the end because it's like, well, he's just a stalker. Either he kills the woman or he doesn't. And this is still a Saturday morning cartoon, so we can't do that. So what do we do? Uh, I don't know. He tries to burn down the city with experimental gel. Well, how the hell does that work? He wasn't that sort of villain a minute ago. No, but yeah. Well, we just realized that at the end. Or they, or, or standards and practices changed it at the last second, so we had to just pull a hat trick. Oh, he has a gel. Um, yeah, Firefly, man. He's 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 a bookend character. The, the, when they used him in Nightfall, and he's like, "No, my sister and I were adopted. We're, we're never adopted. And every time that a foster family was gonna like take care of us, they told us about the places they were gonna take us because we were children, and then they never did. So I'm gonna burn those places down. I'm like, Ooh. shut up, go away. That's it's uh, such a stretch. Yeah, uh, Jose uh, Bane you, stops using Venom and uses his genius intellect to make Santa Prisa a new international power nation. Ooh. I mean, he already pretty much has done all those things except a for making Presidente Santa Prisa. Bane. <laughs> Presidente Bane is the book. That's a good one. And the cover, the cover for issue one is just him as Che Guevara. Oh my God, yeah, these are great. These are all great. I had a vision of him like on a on a on a throne with like a with, like a flag of his logo. You know, mm, that's good too. I like. But that yeah, as well. either way, I mean, like, listen, that's a Presidente Bane is the book. That's a book. That's not even. I'm not even gonna like put that in our category. That is a thing they should do with Bane. And he has many sweeping socialist reforms that pisses off the likes of Amanda Waller and such. And he and he teams up with Black Adam, obviously. Not like oh, that yeah. he teams up with him like they fight together, but like no, like now we have like an Axis. Yes. Uh he uh, then we get another character to take over Corto Maltese, get that island nation oh, involved. Yeah, yeah. Like now we start creating like a thing. Like there's actually like tumult in the region. Absolutely. Get, get like one of those rogue Atlantean states. What's the one with the redheaded people? Zabel. I don't recall, but I do like that idea. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they now they're now there's a power structure and struggle in the DC universe. Yeah, I they, love the, that. the independent protectorate of Zabel. And yeah, they're uh, going to the UN and they're throwing their dicks around and everything. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. No, they're making a mockery of the entire process. Uh, Raidu, thanks for your generosity. Says, uh, Rachel Ghoul, a different take on the Batman Beyond story. Bruce has died and has some time ago, and Rache. Over time, realizes Gotham needs a Batman and ends up being a mentor figure for Terry. That'd be fun. My, I, I had a, like a very loose pitch similar to that, which is just like Rachel Ghoul actually learns a lesson from his time on Earth, and it's like right. you know he kills Batman, and then he realizes like oh Batman was actually responsible for a lot of like support and Oops. good in the world, and now I need to put more of that out there. Um, and so he like uses the League of Shadows, obviously, as some kind of like kind of similar to like how Daredevil used the hand or tried to. There's become, something like, a, there. Yeah, like a like League of Shadows being like a force for good, but like the Maybe just being like is Batman by this point. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Ra's al Ghul like maybe learns the wrong lesson, but is like, no, 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 no. And then we sons of Batman it, the the League, the League of Shadows becomes the League of Bat or the Shadow of the Bat. There we go. Ooh. And uh, you know, they just do all kinds of bat shit. And uh Damien's like, I either have to kill Raish and take it, or I gotta fight him forever. Yeah, so what am I going to do here? Which still isn't really a Rachel Ghoul is a bad guy or is a good guy story, but you know. <laughs> the, the thing about Rachel Ghoul is that even when he tries to do good, he ends up doing bad because his whole modus operandi is I want to save the world from ecological disaster, but I can't do that without killing half the population. Right. Plus I'm an egomaniac. <laughs> it, it's just it's just the easiest way to get to what I want, you see. Right, exactly. So what uh what other what other villains did you want to break good? I feel like there's uh, gotta be a penguin in there somewhere. Th there is. I actually wrote this long before the Tom King thing was even announced. So it's funny how this was similar, but not really. Again, because I made I made Riddler the spy. Penguin, th this was obvious to me, you know. You gotta set Penguin up against someone who's more wicked than him. He's a pretty simplistic Batman villain in that he only wants money and respect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not a lot of stuff to make good there. My idea is, is that eventually Blackgate Penitentiary and 
Batman finally gets sick of Penguin. They're like, look, every time we send him to this prison, it never friggin' works, is what it does. He just ends up breaking out. He holds court. He runs the whole prison in a matter of days. So guess what? You don't get to go to your cushy Blackgate penitentiary cell. We're sending you to Bell Rev, Penguin. You get to go no. to real fucking hard prison with Amanda Waller. And you make it a whole story about Penguin being like, ah, yes, I'm sure I'll be recruited for the Suicide Squad any day now because I have such an inflated sense of ego and Amanda <laughs> Waller being like, what the fuck do you bring besides umbrellas and snootiness? You're not on my goddamn suicide squad. I refuse. Right. Yeah. So I instead, can see. Yeah. So instead she has him out like breaking rocks in the field and everything and doing like hard labor. Totally. I love that. I, I, I just, I had this idea of like just her being him orchestrating like a prison break just so he could have a one-on-one -on -one session with Amanda Waller being like, what is taking so long? Yeah, that, that, that's what it is. It's it's Penguin by way of Oz is what it is. And he he ends up recruiting his own Penguin squad of villains who Waller thought was too lame to ever join her team. And so yep. it's kind of like, you know, how, how do we gain power in the prison? How do we become top dogs? And how do we eventually stick it to that damn warden, Amanda Waller? So it would be a prison book is what it is. It would be Penguin in prison would be the whole book. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. That's actually a, that's a that's a penguin book that justifies itself similar to the one that actually exists now. Um in terms of like there being a penguin book on the stand that justifies its own existence somehow. Right. Uh The derpiest of derps, uh, here's my goofy pitch that there's a food chain in Gotham running all the family businesses out of town, so Condiment King has to save them. That's a <laughs> that's a backup by uh, That's a solid backup. By like Belen Ortega drawing it. Like them from the backups in Wonder Woman, yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. And you give him like really dark neo noir, uh, friggin' like internal monologue. Like he's taking it one hundred percent seriously. Like, yes. oh, the, the, the beef of Gotham has soured, and now it is up to me to clean out the kitchen. Only the Condiment King can cut the mustard. That actually, I'd be like, all right, Tom, I need you to write a Condiment King story that is yeah, just Elmer to, like, Fudd it. the Elmer Fudd book, yeah. Uh, George J. Imagine a future Robin was a child of one of the Gotham's major crime families, like the Falcones. We already have that. Called it's Huntress. called the Huntress. Huntress yeah. is the daughter of the Bertinelli crime family, but a Robin would be cool. Or just making Huntress into a member of the Bat family officially would be nice. Um, R Rupert Thorne Jr. ends up becoming the newest Robin. I'd be okay with that. I'd, I'd, that'd be interesting. Uh, Jones 25 full uh, signal man slash blue Bowman is due for a cat man like redemption. Right. One of the few villains to give up a Batman shtick for a green arrow. One is super interesting. Yeah. I've said time and time again, there is something with signal man and I love his costume and the fact that no one has dug any deeper than that. The problem is, is that his mania is very much like low rent Riddler. Like I'm obsessed with symbols and symbology. And it's like, well, if I had a story for that, I'd just do a Riddler story. <laughs> It would be harder to sell, yeah. But I do like the idea, but I do admire it. I'm like, yeah, no, that's that's neat. Um, George J returns to say, I've always had a soft spot for the animated series villains. Lock up and Roxy Same. Rock. It'd be interesting to see them turn good. I mean, it'd be nice to see them do anything, but yes, Roxy is always one step away from being like an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. And like, again, could... I... I, I have always had such love and admiration for Lockup because I think his gimmick is so perfectly retro Batman obsessed with bondage and keys and locks and everything. Yeah, and making him into like the a prison guard who's just been like disaffected by the system being like, this place is a revolving door. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, and have him be like this dirty, hairy guy. Like again, in a day and age now where, you know, the prison industrial complex is more fucked up than it's ever been. You have nothing to say with Lockup. Right. Avery a Avery Trujillo or Trujillo says, uh, "Isn't Captain Cole the hero? Did they re did they resolve that story? I don't know. He goes, he goes back and forth. He goes back and forth. As I understand it, I I I look at Snark as being just a massive piece of crap at all times. Uh, it's true. Nick Smith, uh, how about a holiday killer returns and the <laughs> G GCPD work with Two Face to discover the identity, only to re be revealed that Holiday is Andrea Beaumont." Uh -huh. Yeah, good old Andrea Beaumont. I mean, I, uh, she she did come back in the Batman Catwoman series. That's true. I forgot that. Holy shit, though. Though, is that in continuity? Is she really in canon or is she not? <laughs> what's up in the air? <laughs> I don't consider Batman Catwoman to be in canon at all. Oh, well, there you go. I I, uh, I did have a Two Face pitch, and I'm actually Yay! really proud of this Two Face pitch. Yeah. So Two Face joins the Doom Patrol. And he starts working with Crazy Jane to go into his own underground to resolve his issues with his darker half. Oh, great. Yeah. 
because she has a hundred split personalities. He has one and it completely turns Harvey's life around. Maybe he even gets surgery to fix the other half of his face. It's like, wow, you know, you Doom Patrol guys do such good work and you're so, you know, unrespecting everything. We need to take what you guys are doing and we need to bring it to Gotham is what we need to do. We need to start helping people. And of course, because this is, you know, a Batman story, shit needs to get fucked up. I would say uh, a, a bunch of criminals that uh, Harvey worked with in the past, maybe prosecuted, all start winding up dead, cut completely in half, bisected. And uh, it's all the work of a mysterious new serial killer called The Judge. <laughs> Yay! Because in fixing his darker half, uh, Harvey ended up actually releasing another more evil third personality who is jumping around in people's bodies via the underground, and it's up to Harvey and the Doom Patrol to stop him. That's fun. Yeah, I love that. Harvey joining the Doom Patrol is a great opportunity to have the Doom Patrol kind of like mucking around Gotham and mm -hmm. get to see from another from another vantage point. Like we know what Gotham looks like through the through the view of the villains, the heroes, etc. But like from a group like the Doom Patrol who are a group of misfits yeah. seeing a broken city like Gotham. They're like, I feel at home here. Absolutely. And I mean, just Harvey in the underground where it's like, if Jane can make peace with her personality, surely Harvey, you can make peace with your one personality. Right. Uh, Tevia uh, suggested Deadshot kid becomes new Deadshot. Oh yeah. What to happened to her dad? Oh yeah. Uh, what happened to Deadshot's kid? The, the end of the Taylor run. I know nothing about that. Yeah, yeah, Deadshot had a kid. Well, well, he always had a kid, a daughter, but yes. the daughter actually became, like, made her own Deadshot costume and everything. Right? No, that's interesting. I've, I know nothing about that. I'm not... It was, it was very adorable. It was the Tom Taylor run. It was only, like, a couple volumes. Mm, okay. Also, Deadshot died at the end of that and has stayed dead. <laughs> yeah, okay, there you go. So you can play with that a little bit. No one's in any uh, rush to resurrect Deadshot, which is a shame. <laughs> yeah. Catler would defend for treats. If uh, what if Arkham therapy worked on Zaz? Yeah. Screw Zaz. The, the best Zaz story was the one they just did in Batman and Robin, where some kid thought he was his dad, but he wasn't. And Zaz is like, oh, "I'm going to kill you anyway. I'm right. Zaz. I'm not yeah. very complex. I'm not a complex person. I kill people. I cut the notch into my flesh to signify your death. Um, I also like. He's like, there's no way. There's no way that I'm not um, like that. <laughs> yeah, there's no way that I had a kid. Yeah. I, I, I'm very I, careful. I, he is. Shockingly, of all the things, as is, he's very careful when it comes to contraception. <laughs> well, he's meticulous. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, Juwan Fincher, uh, Lady Shiva finally changes her ways, becomes part of her daughter's life. Lady Shiva is always like, that's a fun character that is rarely utilized. Right. And I love that concept of like Lady Shiva kind of like doing something. I don't Absolutely. have a good pitch for her, but I, I mean, I'll take the idea of her just. I mean, she could totally be a bird of prey. Yeah. 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 Big time. That's Especially this new, like, more serious incarnation of the Birds of Prey. Totally. Well, it's always a morphing cast now. Like, the Birds yes. of Prey book is like, change up the cast a little bit. Although I'm glad to see, at least in this most recent issue of Birds of Prey, uh, Big Barda stayed. Yay. Good. Uh, what else you got? What other villains need to break good in this world? I mean, obviously, Catwoman doesn't count. The One Bad Day thing, I was like, it, yeah, that I book didn't count sucked. Catwoman. And it's also, it's a real shit. That was a real downer. I had um, such high hopes for that one. Again, same. so many ideas where it's a, you needed another month to cook with this. There was a lot of ideas here that never quite came to fruition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, very quick point. Uh, George J says Prometheus doing a face turn would be interesting, especially if Bat and Arrow families uh, are involved. Ain't he still dead? Yeah, and wasn't the one we had, was he even the real? I remember Midnighter had a, a Prometheus, but I don't think they ever named which one it was. Because there's mm. the real Prometheus, then there was a fake one that was running around too. Yeah, yeah. But I like the idea of Prometheus trying to be a hero. And Batman there's and Green Hour being like, no. Not <laughs> on our life. Yes. Uh, what else we got? Uh, I had a Mr. Freeze pitch, actually, that I was also Ooh. pretty proud of. So obviously, as we said before, Mr. Freeze is in a really weird position because he's almost too sympathetic sometimes. And Batman kind of feels like a jerk for trying to stop him. And it's like, well, geez, either he fixes his wife or he doesn't. What the <laughs> hell are you doing here? So yeah. my idea is, you know, we need to find something else for Mr. Freeze to do. And uh, I, I had a pitch that was ironically inspired by Breaking Bad. He's breaking into a factory trying to steal chemicals to save Nora. And he ends up running into another guy who is stealing the same chemicals to try and save his girlfriend who is sick, not dying, but sick. She's in early stages of McGregor syndrome. Mm. and victor's like get the fuck out of my way man i'm doing this like no i have to save my girlfriend you know she has mcgregor's he's like what stage uh, stage one it's fucking nothing i will go and fix her right now if you get out of my goddamn way <laughs> and, 
And this guy is amazing. Like, oh my God, you can cure early stage McGregor's. Even the pharmaceutical companies aren't there yet. And Victor's like, yeah, I'm a fucking expert at this. I've been working my whole life. You mean people are interested in this? He's like, yes, we're part of a whole like internet support group of people with McGregor syndrome. And Freeze is like, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I'll help you guys right now. And he does. And like basically a whole small community ends up adopting Mr. Freeze and they help him steal what he needs to cure McGregor syndrome. And <laughs> so he ends up catching the ire of the drug company where it's like, hey, 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 this guy is giving this away for free. Can't have that. So yep. you have Batman in a weird position. Where it's like, so do I stop Mr. Freeze, who is saving people's lives and defend the drug companies? What am I doing here? And of course, the drug company hires assassins. You know, they send oh, like sure. Deathstroke and Lady Vic after him. So maybe, hey, maybe Batman even teams up with Mr. Freeze to fight them off. Absolutely. No, yeah. I, I love that idea. That's great. That's a yeah. fun, uh, you know, like people's hero, Mr. Freeze kind of idea. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the guy who Freeze ends up adopting reminds him of a lot of himself. He's basically his own Jesse Pinkman. And he sees the love forged between this guy and his girlfriend. It's like, oh, that reminds me of Nora. And by the end, he's like, you know, I think I think I'm ready to finally let her go is the thing. Mm. Now, There's she, she was my life, but there's more life out there to live. And, you know, I am ready to let in the warmth finally. <laughs> ah, there we go. Uh I like that a lot. That's a good, that's Mr. Freeze lends himself to like really good pitches, man. Right. It's a real, it's a real shame. He's like so underutilized most of the time. And so stuck in his ways where it's like, but, but he's so cool as a bad guy though. But his story is almost, you know, you don't want to make him a bad guy. No, it's true. Uh, J.R. Uh, Gomez says, A Tale of Two Batmen. Uh, Damian Wayne as uh, Incorporated J.L. Batman as Cassandra Cain as Batman of Gotham. Ooh. Would end it with Damian as Terry's mentor. Huh. Okay. Yeah, that this isn't necessarily a breaking good uh, story, but it is a pitch for Batman Beyond, which I mean, shows I would, that people I'd, just I'd love prefer, Batman Beyond. It's true, and I mean, I would prefer Damien as the leader of Batman Inc. than that short-lived Ghostmaker. Ghostmaker, what a freaking weird! Oh, they pushed him. They gave they him a sure hard did. push. Game an action figure too? No thanks. Uh, didn't buy it. Matthew Chalaga, thank you for your generosity. Baby doll, sick of being in Gotham and mm. being a freak. And a laughing stock moves to Metropolis and there meets and falls in love with Toy Man. She's Aww. found someone who accepts her as she is and they met a Superman together. Oh, I like that idea. It's cute. It also is a little creepy. Yeah, yeah it is. Exploring the love of, for, for Baby doll is like, why does Toy Man like her? Because she's like a toy. There, I said it. Okay. I and said it. <laughs> That's better than her being a child. Uh, I was going to say, I like the idea of her just using her voice and being like, uh, you know, she's a podcaster or a radio personality, right. but like, but I think that's great. I mean, like, listen, her teaming up with Toy Man is fun. That's not necessarily, she's not a good guy, but making her a Superman villain is fun. Very. Cause Superman's like, I don't, I, I'm afraid of hurting you. I am so afraid <laughs> of hurting you. I am so powerful and you are so small. Plus, yeah, I do get the thing. Baby doll toy man. Yeah. That's, that's fun. That's a cool concept. Yeah. Well, how have they never done that team up before? Also, does baby doll exist in the main? I don't really? know. See, that's the thing. I've, I don't remember her ever being introduced in the comics, but like, why not? She, she's also a character who has like one excellent episode with one, a heart shattering finale. And then one kind of so, so follow up. Oh, with Killer Croc? Yeah, where they're like, well, what if we kind of make her a Harley where you feel bad for her because she's in an abusive relationship? But then she also gets one over on Croc at the end, being like, nah, I'm actually just as bad as you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, what? This is weird. Yeah, which yeah. which kind of defeats, you know, the whole sympathy thing where it's like, nah, I actually have, like, such a villainous mind. Yeah. Uh, it looks like she came up in White Knight, Lil Gotham, and Batman Ninja Turtles. Okay, so a lot of out-of-continuity stories. Yeah, yeah. So they've never quite brought her again because it's it's such a weird sell and it really only works the one time. Great. The one time it worked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jones 25 full Maxi Zeus is visited by actual Zeus and finds <laughs> religion. I mean, he exists in this universe with Wonder Woman. Maxi Zeus just needs to go hang out with the Wonder Woman book for a bit. I, I feel like Zeus would be like, "Ugh, that guy. Yeah, Jesus. That fanboy. I hate that guy. Diana, punch him for me. <laughs> Jose says the calendar man feels that the seasons are getting shorter and must fight the clock king who has been stealing time from Gotham. Oh, there's right. something there. There's something I, there. I mean, you could turn calendar man into a friggin', you know, climate change hero who like is, you know, just like you're changing the seasons. Everything's changing. It's happening too fast. No. <laughs> yeah. Again, there's something there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something there. I like, I like, I like pitting up two 
borderline unsellable villains and putting them in one book. Maybe they their combined Just power together will, they'll cancel out. Will cancel out or 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 double up. You know, uh, a character we haven't talked about yet, uh, Clayface. I had a Clayface yes. pitch for Basil Carlo. Yeah. So th- this is pretty obvious to me. He goes back to Hollywood to try and restart his career, and he does so in the most interesting way possible. He helps a bunch of young student filmmakers make their cheapo monster movie by using his skills, being like, yeah, you know, I'm, I, I'm a makeup master, wink. Now nah, I can actually just turn myself into monsters and freaks to help your movie and give you, like, super high production quality. Absolutely. No, I mean, honestly, the the, the concept of him like going full special effects and just being like, so I don't have to, uh, it was, it was something that was in the cartoon where it was like, why aren't you just working for Hollywood anyway? You can become anyone. You could save them so much money. You could be most of the cast. Absolutely. And then, you know, we, we, we build out from there and we make it a meditation on modern Hollywood where Basil Carl's like, well, I used to be a bad dude when I was in this town. I ran in bad circles and we have thinly veiled David Zaslavs and thinly veiled, you know, uh, Friggin, oh, uh, Harvey Weinstein's. Yeah. Harvey Weinstein's. Where Baz like, I used to know these guys. I used to run with these guys, and now they're making this town worse. And they're, you know, trying to kill my friends here in this small indie production. You know, I can't yeah. stop them, but Clayface can stop them. So you call it Clayface Hollywood Hero. That's the book. Like, the book is absolutely that. Where it's like Clayface starts out as like i don't want to i'm not fighting anybody i'm not doing anything and then yeah the hollywood system attacks them and he's like i will use my powers to mess them up obviously harvey weinstein knows people you could do another contract kind of thing where it's like absolutely you know you pushed it you put powers into this now I gotta now I gotta hire somebody with powers to fight you, maybe to King Shark them. or something. I don't know. Absolutely, and, and you, you, I, I thought of an amazing scene you ended where you know he corners Harvey Weinstein guy in his office and he uses his powers to take the form of all your victims of all the starlets oh. and all the careers you've ruined. Look upon my face, Harvey Weinstein guy, and everyone's like, <laughs> it was his, it, it was Basil's greatest performance. Yes, exactly. No, I love that. And he did it only for one person, one night only. <laughs> No, and then he and then he becomes the Weinstein character, and then confesses to all the things he did oh, on the oh, internet. Oh. See, look, this writes itself. Yeah, it really does. Uh, by the way, that one bad day, Clayface book was also incredible. Uh, Zermanico's art was fantastic. I and, didn't uh, actually read that one. Actually. Oh man, no, it 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 is Basil goes to Hollywood, <laughs> and it's Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing. It feels very inside baseball Hollywood. Of course, you, you, and, you, you, you as it, it would have to be. Exactly. No, but like these are people who have been there, so they know. And it's like, it's really cool. They really nailed it. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, Juwan Fincher, uh, Roxy Rocket becomes an astronaut. Sure. <laughs> Joins the space program. Yeah. She, she could be an agent of something. She could join the DEO. She could join Argus and like no one would bat an eye. Roxy Rocket could be revealed to be like in Waller's employ for the U.S. government in the current Green Arrow slash Dawn of DC events. And no one would be surprised. Like, yeah, like, using yep. her in any way. I can't believe they had her almost have like an orgasm in the cartoon itself. Yeah, they did. I was like, what is happening? Yeah, they just, did. Like, just, just that was just like you could feel Bruce Tim being getting more power. <laughs> I've never felt more powerful. Uh, Avery Trujillo, uh, I would like to see them give Deathstroke a lead, uh, lead Titans another chance. I feel like it was too short last time and they could have done more with it. I, I mean, they Ain't did it, it the twice. Way. He led the Terror Titans and then he led his other team in the Christopher Priest run, which was basically all the also ran Titans who didn't get the spotlight. And yeah, I agree. That was a good run and it was short lived. Yeah, yeah. Deathstroke running any kind of team would be cool. Very. You know, it doesn't have to be a hero team. This could just be you watch Deathstroke like lead a group of people where he's like, I'm a, I know how to run shit. Like, I'm good at this. He's, he's another guy who they've tried to sympathize and they've tried to, and it's just so hard because it's like, d- dude, you, you're a sex offender, dude. Yeah, you, exactly. You, you, you hurt children both literally and figuratively your entire life. You are the worst. That's why I like that Christopher Priest run so much because it's like, no, villainous protagonist. I'm not even going to bother to try and make him good. And even when we do make him good, it's because he literally got inverted and even he's like, God, being good sucks. This is hard. <laughs> it's hard. And nor- my, my, natural impulse is not this yeah i don't uh, like this robert core is a good point he says scarecrow out of his depth space adventure as a yellow lantern could be training day meets blackest night 
That'd be kind of okay. fun. Okay, I'm glad you had something for Scarecrow because the last two I could not crack was Scarecrow and Mad Hatter because they're weirdo creeps who are so self-centered and like it's very hard to turn their powers for good. But yeah, sending Scarecrow to space to be a Yellow Lantern is something because if Sinestro can kind of be a good guy sometime, maybe he can end up, you know, uh, extending that olive branch to Crane. Totally. I mean, I, I love the idea of making Crane into a spacefaring, reluctant, like fish out of water type character. I would also be okay with him just using fear. I mean, Batman essentially is Scarecrow, but a superhero. Like he right. uses fear to 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 scare the criminal element, but you make it more personal. I mean, like you don't make it necessarily the Scarecrow's a hero. You just have like it's an intimate Scarecrow story about like Scarecrow seeing a character that reminds him of himself, and he uses fear right. to like help him out or her out. And I could like I could easily see a story where like Crane is he he's uh maybe he you do a whole and the, the animated series angle was always good at this where they were like well this is a hospital you are free now yeah so like crane leaving and kind of like getting a job in some academia obviously he wouldn't but it's a fictional comic book universe so bear with me for a moment but like you know he works in community college and he's doing you know the like it's the lowest form for him you know it's like he's but he's, he's got to start like, over he's got to start over co completely from scratch but like you know he's got he's got his doctorate and then the so budget cuts start coming from a bunch of spineless, corrupt bureaucrats. And he's like, I will show them fear. You can do that. I was thinking like, you know, but he, he, he takes on like, you know, he's got a student body. He's got one kid. She's really good at what she does. She's, he sees a lot of promise in her. Like he's better than this place. And so is she. And so mm. I'm going to put special attention on her. And then like, you can see that she's being intimidated by people in her own class. And so he gets right, involved right. and then, and then, you know, she flips the tables on him and she's like, I don't need your, like, I don't want you to help me. And he's like, I'm obsessive. That's what I do. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know? And then like, it becomes that she's like, you know, she kind of becomes like, she's like the, you know, your fear is so one dimensional, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. You could, you could also do maybe an Arkham pitch where he actually gets a job as a new counselor at Arkham. And the idea is I have, you know, Jerry rigged and changed my fear gas. Now it's not about bringing in your darkest, worst fears. Now it's about helping you face your fears. And through therapy, we're going to do fear immersion therapy oh. and, come, and come out the other end of it, you know, where you're not scared of the thing you're scared of anymore. Scarecrow now helps you overcome fear. Yeah. I kind of love that. I, I mean, Batman uses Scarecrow's own fear toxin usually to fix his own problems. So yeah, I kind of love it. Yeah, face face your fears with Jonathan Crane this summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and you said Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter's a tough one too. Uh I, so I think weird. I, I don't know if I actually necessarily have a Mad Hatter as the protagonist thing, but Mad Hatter being a like use it in a support role, obviously right. working for Amanda Waller in mind control. You know, like what that's, I need you to miniaturize your 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 mind control devices. Yeah, that's the problem because it's mind control and it brings up a lot of really uncomfortable questions about consent. And he's yes. you know obsessed with young blonde women named Alice. There's just there's a lot of ick with Jervis that you need to deal with. It's true. And what you do is you just don't like you know what I mean. You just lean into it. You go like, okay, uh, he works with the CIA now or whatever department. Like you need to put him into Task Force X. But, you know, I, I think he's actually been in Task Force X or Suicide Squad. But, like, you just... Uh, he was on the Secret Six for, like, a hot minute. Secret <laughs> Six, there you go. But, like, yeah, and he's... The problem is he's just... He's too obsessive. And he's he's just off the deep end. And you, you never get enough out of him. Um, True. I, I had half an idea that wasn't quite there. And my idea is, like, okay, let's maybe try and bring it back to his childhood when he wasn't so bad. Maybe he was part of, like, a Stranger Things, Dungeons & Dragons, LARP group. And that was, like, the only time he was ever really happy because they lived in fantasy. But he took it too seriously. And many years later, one of his old friends from school ends up dying under mysterious circumstances. So he reunites everyone, kind of parlor mystery, to try and get to the bottom of the murder and try and figure it out. Because obviously, you know, someone in this room is the killer. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good use of Mad Hatter. He turns it into a game and it's like, you know, one of you is the killer and, you know, using my powers, I'm going to make you confess. But that's like one story. That's not like yeah. a whole new status quo. For he did one good thing one time when he felt selfishly, you know, connected. to. There you go. I wrong. mean, that's one bad. That's one good day. That's the book. It's the it one time. One. Yeah, that's your one. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Last Starfighter, uh, you gotta scroll back, my friend. Uh, build up a third personality for Two Faces, Judge and Vigilante on a Better Path. We, oh, we were uh, there. We talked a little bit about that, so we were on the same page, my friend. You are you are not far off. 
uh, Adam Thenhouse, uh, Croc and Bane uh, join Gotham <laughs> Championship Wrestling as a tag team, the teeth and the beef. GCW, GCW. That, that's funny. I like that a lot. I, they have a big history together. That'd be kind of fun to see. That would be. Uh, Chaotic Chris, Penguin's Dying of Cancer, builds a cancer hospital as his final legacy. Uh, I like that idea. He's he's died of cancer before. Uh, yeah, fake but, uh, cancer. <laughs> fake cancer. But I love the idea of him uh, using his wealth as a kind of like attempt to put his name over all the Wayne stuff that's happening. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be like, I'm I'm the hero this city actually needs. I'm the one who can actually make sweeping reform with my money. Yeah, Penguin becoming just a philanthropist. Yeah, he becomes like Nucky Thompson. He's throwing turkeys out of vans and stuff. Mm -hmm. I kind of love that. Yeah. There's definitely <laughs> something there you could do with that for sure. I mean, uh -huh. hey, uh, history is dotted with lots of crime figures who also arguably did some good. Look, you know, all the mobsters during World War II. Even that yeah. new Captain America book is like, you know who was kind of cool? Meyer Lansky. Right. <laughs> That's a good book. It um, is. But yeah, man, it's uh, there, obviously villains lend themselves to if good villains or even like villains with potentially led themselves to a story where they can become their own protagonists uh, yeah. and you can angle it to a point where they actually are good in their own stories especially if you focus only on them and from their perspective especially um, batman villains who are so three-dimensional anyway and who have so much of their characters rooted in the human condition exactly so I mean, this is an idea that has uh, endless potential. We touched upon most of the biggest ones. We even gave him, gave Joker a chance to be cool. Mm. Um, but uh, but there's so much more. Uh, and I especially want to thank our super chatters yeah, and yeah. our chat for making your own suggestions and giving your own ideas. Uh, I love how creative you guys are. It's fantastic mm -hmm. to see. Thank you so much for your great ideas. I'm going to just gobble them up and then make money off of them. Ah, <laughs> but, uh, but no, this is great uh, and, and a lot of fun. And I, I really applaud Joel for like spearheading this concept and for really giving us a lot of pitches and for letting me just kind of muck around with them a little bit. But uh, thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you all for being here and for your support, for your sponsoring today's show. If you want to help us out, Watch the shows when they're live. Like, watch it when it's done. Click the like for, for uh, to, it helps us out somehow. I don't know why. Uh, hit the bell for notifications and, uh, you know, subscribe. It really helps us out. So mm -hmm. stick around for more. And uh, if you haven't already, you should definitely watch all the other shows we do here and over on youtube.com oh, yeah. slash Cape Joel. Thank you. So check him out as well. And we'll see you guys next week with another episode. So long, everybody. Bye-bye.